Welcome to Harringay TUC, Trade Union Council election hustings. Uh, my name is Jenny Sutton. I'm the Assistant Secretary of the Trades Council, but the reason that I'm chairing the meeting is the chair and the secretary of the TUC are both Labour Party members. So as I'm not a member of any of these organisations, it was felt that I might be the, the most or the least, the least partisan. Um, OK, no promises there. But thank you very much for coming. Uh, the way that it's going to work is that... Uh, oh, let me ask you, let me just go through a couple of um, housekeeping things first. Um, if you need the toilets, they're out that way. The fire exits are out that way also. There's the green sign there. Um, this, the meeting is going to be filmed uh, and videoed and is photographed, so I hope there are no objections there. You'll feel free to tweet during the process of the meeting. It's hashtag HTUC votes 18. Hashtag HTUC votes 18. The way that the hustings is going to work is that we've got four candidates here. It's a real shame that we don't have all the candidates represented who are standing. For some reason, the Tories didn't think it was worth bothering to come along. Um, so I'll leave that to you as to whether you decide to give them your vote or not. Um, but the candidates that we have got here are Nick Ovesh from the Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition, Emine Ibrahim from the Labour Party, Jarell Francis from the Green Party, and Viv Ross from the Liberal Democrats. The way it's going to work is the candidates are going to do an opening statement of five minutes, and then there will be questions from the floor, strictly questions. I'm going to limit you to one minute to do a question from the floor, and then <coughs> each candidate will have two minutes to answer those questions. I'm going to be very strict with the timing, just because that's the best way to ensure that we've got fairness across the panel but also to get in as many questions as possible from the floor. Okay, so the first to give the opening statement of five minutes long is going to be Nick Ovesh from the Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition. Thanks very much, Jenny, and uh, thanks to the Trade Council for inviting us. Um, so I'm the candidate for the task. So I'll start by explaining who we are. Um, some of you may realise that we stood very widely in the council elections last time. Um, we are standing in the ward of seven sisters on this occasion. Um, we uh, have to say from the outset... I'm not, shall I use this? Or, is, yes, are you hearing me okay with or without? With. with. Okay, with. All right, okay. Um, stop the clock, Chair. Um, OK, so um, we recognise that there's been a change in the Labour Party um, and it uh, makes that point on our, on our leaflet. Uh, and we'd like to think that Tusk played a small part in that. I know that the, uh, one of the candidates that I stood against in the last local authority elections uh, is now branded as a, as a Labour left winger is an outside candidate for the Labour, sh Labour leadership in Harringay and has now fully embraced the ideas of anti-austerity. So um, I'd like to think that she uh, picked up a few tips from our campaign last time and I would congratulate her for that. And we look <laughs> forward to working with those comrades to establish a no-cuts council in Harringay. Uh, why are we standing? As I said, we're standing in the borough or in the ward of Seven Sisters. Uh, there are three candidates, and we think that in particular in that ward, where are three of the most dedicated opponents of the ideas uh, put forward by Jeremy Corbyn, the ideas opposing austerity, uh, one in particular regularly tweets against Corbyn and even in favour of the war. We think that it's, it would be a terrible shame if there was no one in that ward to speak up for the ideas opposing austerity and opposing war, and opposing war which is why we've taken the decision to stand in that ward. We apologise for those of you who we've left out. Um, 
And if we, uh, if you haven't got an opportunity for vote for TUS because you don't live in Seven Sisters, then I'd like to extend the invitation to you all to come and help us campaign and produce a small political earthquake in the ward of Seven Sisters. Our message is no cuts. It's quite simple. No to privatisation and no to cuts. All TUS candidates make a simple pledge, <laughs> and that is that they don't implement cuts. Last night I was uh, at a, an event to discuss social care and there was some harrowing testimony given by some of the victims of the cuts that have been implemented by Haringey Council in relation to their, uh, their children, uh, their relatives, uh, the closure of Osborne Grove, the fact that there's insufficient provision for people with autism, um, and I think all of those people at the meeting recognised the enormous problems that, that, this, uh, that, this, has uh, 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 that this has caused. Too and nice. indeed all the candidates recognised that. And they were all very sympathetic. But the point is... You can be very sympathetic about the cuts. Uh, I think the question that we want to ask more than anything else is what are you going to do about them? It's all very well to cry about the centres that have been closed, but the crucial question is when are you going to reopen those centres? The day centres, but for that matter not just the social care centres, also the youth centres. The, the provision for youth in Haringey has been decimated. There is only, to my knowledge, one existing youth centre in the whole of Haringey. There used to be 13 prior to 2011. And we've seen the deadly consequences of those cuts recently on our television screens and, uh, and in the press. So what we're proposing is not just to, to moan, although that has its place, but actually not to implement these cuts. There are the resources there. Haringey have those resources. So what we're saying is no to cuts. Don't implement those cuts. That will buy us time. Haringey, if it made a firm commitment not to implement those cuts, it could well find itself in the position of spearheading a campaign that was supported by other councils up and down the country. And then we wouldn't have to wait until 2020 to elect Jeremy Corbyn that we could see him in power a lot, uh, a lot longer, a lot shorter than, than that. For us, austerity, um, it, some people say austerity is a choice. For us, we say it's a choice that we can't afford. We can't afford it nationally and we can't afford it locally. So come and campaign for Tusk and if you're lucky enough to live in Seven Sisters, you Stop can vote you. for us as well. <laughs> Absolutely perfect timing. Well done, Nick. Okay, our next speaker is Darrell Francis, who is from the Green Party. Good evening, everyone. My name is Darrell. I'm standing for the Green Party in St Anne's Ward. And it's uh, one of the first times that I've been campaigning for the Green Party when we can genuinely actually win a seat. So it's quite an exciting time for us. And we desperately need a Green voice on having a council. We currently have 49 Labour councillors um, and the rest are Lib Dems, one defected to Labour, so we're not sure how much of a good opposition they are. And we desperately need uh, green voices um, for residents. So when I knock on doors, residents are not listened to by this uh, Haringey Labour Council. They haven't been listened to for a very, very long time. Things like the HDV, which had very little consultation and was pushed through um, by a small, uh, small cabal um, without any consideration for local people um, is the way that Claire Cobra did run this council and know she's leaving now and you're going to hear all the platitudes from Labour councillors who are running in this election that they are not the same as Claire Cobra. They're going to be a completely different Labour. They're going to start listening to their constituents again. But they've had their chance and their opportunity and we really need to, um, we need someone to hold them to account. And that's what we would do as a Green Party. We're not going to run the council. That's not going to be possible. But we could have people um, holding them to account, just making sure um, that they are doing the right thing for their own constituents. Um, what are the main things that we support as a Green Party? Um, we've got our manifesto on the back there for everyone to pick up and read later on, but I'll just quickly go through major points that we want to implement. 
Um, the first is uh, to reverse cuts to youth services. We've seen the horrendous <coughs> spike in um, crime, unfortunately, um, which has affected Haringey and St Anne's is in Tottenham and Tottenham's been affected by that. And that is directly because of the cuts to youth services. Now, I know we are under a Conservative government and we are under constraints as a council, but the Haringey Labour Council could have not um, implemented many of the cuts to youth services, which have had a uh, horrific detrimental effect. So we will be investing in our youth services again and our young people. Um, and that's something that's close to my heart, uh, being from Tottenham um, and seeing young people grow up and seeing my nephews grow up. And I really want to start making sure that we are giving young people the opportunity that they deserve again. Um, we would also reverse the cuts to social care. Um, as mentioned uh, by the Tusk candidate, there has been major cuts to um, social care in this area with, again, horrific consequences, and we will be against that. Um, um, we value our social care, and we really need to start investing in those again. Um, we will start to implement uh, zero carbon policies in our borough. I have personally put up um, pollution monitors in and around Two minutes. the borough, around schools as well. They are um, breathing in air which is actually illegal. Um, and we have 9,000 premature deaths a year in London. And young kids are growing up with underdeveloped lungs. And it's quite an important issue. Um, it affects their learning. And so we would start implementing safer cycle routes. Um, we would cut off certain uh, driving routes to school in certain times. They do it in um, other boroughs quite successfully. And that's just something else we would um, implement. Um, also, I mentioned HDV earlier. It's a contentious issue. We are under no illusions of the challenges and nuances faced uh, by this generation in building new, cheap, um, affordable uh, housing. So that we understand that challenge. But um, to consult people um, is a major, major issue. And we would be consulting everyone and giving everyone ballots on their, uh, on their, in their houses. Um, if, if you wanted to uh, knock down a development, you would have to consult the people, which wasn't done with HDV at all. And so we would be implementing um, fairer, more integrated systems. Um, and we are more about um, improving the homes of people whose homes have been left to um, degrade under the uh, Labour Council. I remember Claire Cobra getting up in a civic meeting and saying that there's damp and all sorts of things in, in the houses. And I agreed with her. And that's the legacy of this Haringey Labour. So we want uh, affordable housing um, and we want it to be implemented with people's knowledge um, and with their foresight. Thank you. All perfect timing. It's going very well. Okay, the <laughs> next speaker is MA Ibrahim, who is speaking for the Labour Party. Hello, um, my name's Amina Ibrahim, and I'm representing the Labour Party at tonight's meeting. And I'm standing as one of the Labour candidates for Knoll Park Ward, um, which is the ward I actually grew up in. And um, I feel really, really strongly that um, I think we, 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 we really do need to make a, make a difference in terms of the, 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 the local issues. But what I'm going to be kind of focusing on, because tonight is a um, meeting of the local TUC about trade union issues. And obviously I'll try to address some of the, the, the local issues um, in some of the questioning later on. So um, I'm also a, a delegate um, to Haunted and Wood Green Labour Party from Unison, which is the public service union, and I'm the leading Unison uh, workplace rep it for the London Borough of Redbridge, so I represent people uh, working in public services on a daily basis. Um, so I also want to um, thank um, the officers of the local TUC for inviting us to this meeting, give us, giving us the opportunity to make our case. Um, so in my contribution this evening, I want to make three um, key points. Um, firstly, I want us to look at the position of uh, people in, 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 in the workplace nationally and how that's um, relevant to Haringey. 
And, and secondly, I want to look at and um, what's being done locally in Haringey under um, and what will be done under a future Labour administration. And thirdly, I want um, us to look forward and see how a new la or how the new Labour Council will further the interests of, of workers. So um, let's start by looking at the uh, at the world of work today. And one in ten UK workers are working in precarious jobs, um, casual labour, including what we call the so-called um, gig economy, and that's something like 3.2 <coughs> million workers. And a precarious jobs, and um, where um, is is when, when we talk about that specifically is when workers aren't certain what they what, what 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 work they'll be doing, um, how how much and when they will be paid, and what they will get in the future. And this can take many forms. Many of you have heard about zero hours contracts, agency workers, fixed term temporary contracts, low and low paid bogus self employment. Now the, the, the first three are actually particularly relevant for, for the local authorities. That may not have been the case twenty years ago, but it certainly is the case now. In Haringey, that certainly includes wider than the council, that certainly includes um, workers at the Crouch End Picture House, for example, who are all on zero <coughs> hours contracts. And um, kind of behind all these headlines, though, a, a far more um, dramatic um, picture emerges. And trade union membership has dramatically declined over the last 30 years. And, you know, we've, um, and, and this has happened under Thatcherism and neoliberalism from a high point in 1979 of something like 30 million down to fewer than 6 million in, 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 in today's environment. And I suppose um, the, 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 the most important thing about this is that the, the collapse of, of coverage of, of union negotiated collective agreements. And I think it's really, really important that we um, kind of do, do what we can on a local level. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we're in a current situation where Labour isn't in power nationally, but what can we do locally to, 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 to promote a, a collective agreement environment. So um, I'm, I'm conscious of time. So, um, you know, ultimately, what's really, really important is, is looking at what we do in Haringey in terms of particularly in the social care sector. I know there was a really strong debate last night at another hustings, but actually how we treat workers, which, you know, we, we don't directly employ anymore, which we outsource to private companies and how we ensure that actually um, the, the, the people that are delivering the services to our communities are actually getting paid a fair wage to be doing that and that is that is one of the key issues that we need to, to, to face up to. So. Um, what we will ensure that we do, and, and I just want to um, get, get, get in the issue about the, 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 the Trade Union Act. So what we will commit to do in Haringey is to continue to allow recognised trade unions to collect subscriptions through the payroll. To um, we, we, We've also committed to uh, for our social care contract to um, paying the, the London living wage to all our contracted out staff. Thank you. I'm sure m and will have a chance to address some of the other points in questions from the floor. Okay, our final speaker for this first round is Viv Ross, who is Liberal Democrat candidate. Thank you. Hi, my name is Viv Ross. I'm uh, currently a councillor in Fortis Greenwall for the Liberal Democrats. Um, the Liberal Democrats want a free, fair and open society. We try to balance the fundamental values of liberty, equality and community. And we believe that no one shall be enslaved by poverty, ignorance or conformity. I'm am ambitious for our borough and its potential. <laughs> I know my party can deliver on our promise of a better Haringey because we have a strong track record of doing so for, for many years as the sole opposition to Labour, holding them to account. We currently have eight councillors, but over the past um, 16 or so years we've ranged from 15 up to 27 at times. Since the last election, last local election, we pressed the council to build the first new council homes for 25 years. Stop the Muswell Hill and library, uh, Highgate Library sites being sold off. 
stood up against the Haringey Development Vehicle, and I'm sure there'll be questions on that later on. We've campaigned on fairer funding for our schools, reducing crime, stopping the closure of the borough's only council-run care home, and opposed the new garden waste charges. We will accelerate the building of council and genuinely affordable homes in Haringey using a wholly owned, wholly council owned housing company. We'll protect private tenants by introducing a landlord licensing scheme. To help local residents with the cost of living, we will freeze core council tax for the next four years. However, where necessary, we'll raise the social care precept to provide adequate funding for this vital service. We'll improve children's physical and mental health prioritise the attainment for BAME children, increase apprenticeships and support the transition from primary to secondary school. We'll improve the council's child protection services. We'll ensure that older people are properly, properly cared for in the community, including those with dementia. We'll create new support centres for people with learning disabilities and provide better support and facilities for all with physical disabilities. We'll focus on physical activity in care homes and improve provision of sports and physical activity spaces in the boroughs, parks and green spaces. We'll hire extra police officers to tackle violent crime in the borough and prioritise <coughs> the escalating problem of moped-related crime. We'll reintroduce youth and le leisure services as a way to divert potential young offenders away from criminal activities. We'll give people... people Sorry, we'll give people better alternatives to driving, encouraging walking, cycling, the use of electric vehicles and public transport, and bring the ultra-low emission zone to Haringey. We'll make recycling easier and, as I said earlier, abolish green waste charges. That's our vision for Haringey Council. Thank you. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, under time, brilliant.